The course here at Yorkshire has been used for a few national races, the first of which was in the heat of 89, when our top riders were the unstoppable Peugeot pair of Gordon Baker, who had time in those days to wait for their colleague Fred Salmon. On the day, Gould took victory while it was Baker's job to shepherd home Salmon. Smile. And I wonder how many of you could recognise this as Barry Clark on his first excursion on fat tyres. While in the women's race, guess what? Sean Roberts and Deb Morell fought out a sprint finish, which Morell won. So are the old hands now looking over their shoulders to the newcomers? There's some new ones that are starting to bark at our heels. There's Matthew Guy had a couple of races that was, you know, with us last year. He's certainly good for the, the first hour, and if he gets a little bit more stamina, he'll be there through the finishing flag. And there's, there's Jamie Norfolk, that's, he's had a particularly good cross season. And there's Alan Gunner that's still coming on. So there's two or three new names that are just sort of almost making the grade. I'm not worried about them because I'm not an old gun. <laughs> um, I mean, they're only a year or two younger than me anyway. But I think it's good that those guys have been given a chance to ride when they are so young. Sean and Deb have been in it from the start. And apart from myself, they've always been there battling it out which, with each other quite a way in front of the competition and I don't expect this year to be any different but uh, you don't know. Well I've learned a lot over the last what, five or six years that I've been riding mountain biking. It takes a while to get used to mountain biking. It's not something you can just turn up and ride. Uh, and like some of the, the courses at the end of last year you, you, you thought were a lot more tricky and you actually, when you actually got there you think oh is that it because we've been conditioned to more extreme things so but, but they fitness wise they're probably as fit it's just uh, maybe take a little bit of time for them to get used to the racing. I think it's really good because there's been about five or six of us on a, a different level in the past and um, the level because we're on that level they want to be there so the level I think the le you'll see the level behind there's going to be 10 good riders this year well, they've been working hard this winter, and I suppose today will be a judge of um, how well they're going. Um, Louise had a good cross season. Angela, I've raced already, and she looks like she's in pretty good shape. So, yeah, I mean, they'll be, they'll be up there as well, fighting for it. It's getting more and more competitive, so the, the time gaps between each rider is coming down, so it's going to be harder this year than it was last year. But it'll be interesting. As soon as they start catching up, that's when we'll start trying harder. This course at Dolby Forest has always been popular with a couple of fast descents straight after the start stringing out the riders before the main climb out of Natley Griff. Road tactics will then apply on the far track section before returning to the single track for the drop down Dargate Slack and the technical climb out of Tom Milner's Grain. Another section of technical single track follows before a final small loop completes the lap. Race commentary is by Hugh Porter. One definite difference between today and 1989 is the weather. The forecast is for heavy rain and in fact we had a snow shower just before the race started. The single track descent is just outside the start arena and first through is local rider Richard Thackeray who likes the head of the race. But Baker and other favourites won't worry about chasing him down at this point. They'll just maintain their places near the front. In the women's race, Alison Windos is leading. This is her first year in the top flight, and she's also opened a slight lead on the field. That includes the national champion, Alexander, making her first appearance. Here are the leading men as they top the hardest climb of the course out of Tom Milner's grain, and Ford and Clark and Baker are at the front. They've also got the company of the rally rider team manager, Gary Coltman, and Jamie Norfolk, who took a surprise bronze at last year's national championships, and Gould completes the top six. The technical single track has stretched them out even more, and now Clark and Ford look like they're starting to edge away. But I don't think any of the riders want to take risks on these slippery, muddy sections. Their tyres will clog very easily, and like Stuart Blunt here, they could struggle on the descents. Missing from the top ten, Adrian Timmis and Nick Craig both seem to be struggling for form. They've got company in the shape of Andrew Wright and Dave Hemming, who's more renowned for his downhilling. Caroline Alexander has made the inevitable early break, but at present she's still within sight of Morell. Roberts and Louise Robinson are also not far off the pace, and like the rest are having to push their bikes up this climb, which they would have ridden in the dry. 
These conditions will certainly not do Alexandra any favours, as she usually gains on the ascents, so she'll have to be at her best here on the single track to stay ahead of Morel, who loves the technical sections. However, she's showing caution here, so at present there are no big gaps appearing among the top four. But they've gained a couple of minutes here over the chasing quartet of Angela Ward, Jackie Fletcher, Alison Windoss and Sarah Cartmel. Off the fire tracks and now down Dargate Slack and Clark and Gould have managed to open a gap. Both are excellent climbers and they got away on the ascent at Natalie Griff. During the previous round, they rode together for the second half of the race in a battle for third. However, this time, they've stole a march on Baker and Ford, who are among this posse of riders that also contains Coltman, Matt Guy, Norfolk, Steve Douse and Thackeray. Gould was saying before how the young riders were closing the gap, and they're certainly up here at present. Though, we'll learn something about their staying power now, believe me, as the reigning champion looks poised to up the pace in an attempt to close down the leaders. Here's another young rider moving up, Scotland's Andrew Wright, junior national champion in 92, and has just gone ahead of Blunt. So confirmation of the positions at present as the next group charge down the gully, headed by Hemming. Meanwhile, in 15th place, the former national cyclocross champion, Chris Young, with... Rejoining the race and the leaders are nearing the end of lap two. And Clark's relentless pressure seems to be paying off. Approaching the main arena up this nasty climb, he's got a slight lead now over Gould. The Schwinn rider has been joined by Baker and Clark will know that if these two get together and start to work, his lead will quickly evaporate. And these tough conditions are stretching the riders. They're all on the limit. This group appears to have been demoralised by Baker's chase and strung out behind him are Ford and Douse. The Scott rider is also staying on the bike here, but Douse, a multinational cyclocross champion, has opted to push the bike. Early pace setter Thackeray is having a good ride in six and he's getting good support from the local crowd. The Clark Alexander household are having a good day as the Klein rider is still away at the front of the women's race. She too seems to have extended her lead on the climb up Natalie Griff. However, in these conditions, mistakes are easy and a slip could easily wipe out the advantage. Morell, who's now been joined by Robinson, will be aware of that, so these two should try to keep Alexander in sight, and by so doing, maintain the pressure. Behind them, Roberts is again struggling as we enter the middle of the race. This didn't stop her coming back to win the first round, however, but with Alexander out front, this could be harder. So it's the climb of Natalie Griff where the gaps are opening. And here's Clark and lap three inflicting damage. And you can just see Gould and Baker in the distance. Clark has three times been the national hill climb champion and he's also a former milk race King of the Mountains winner. So he's at home up here. The two Sheffield riders are still wheel to wheel and the former teammates will have to form a new alliance if they're to reel in the leader. On, Meanwhile, Ford seems to have settled down and he's now chasing hard on his own. Douse is producing a good ride for his new sponsors KHS and looks like he's moving clear of Thackeray who is struggling on the climb. 